بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیجیٹل لرننگ ڈزنٹ جسٹ ہیپن اٹ ریکوائرس کیئر فل پلاننگ اینڈ امپلیمنٹیشن ہائی ایوری ون آئی ایم شکیل احمد اینڈ آئی ایم ہیئر ٹو ڈسکس اباؤٹ برانڈ لرننگ اسٹریٹجیز آئی بلانگس ٹو ڈین شپ آف ای لرننگ اینڈ آئی ٹی اینڈ تھینکس فار جوائننگ دا سیشن I'm here to discuss about blended learning strategies in higher education. My dear staff members, education is no longer just about putting pen to paper and memorizing facts. Today, innovative educators in both higher education and cooperative learning and development are improving learning through technology and as evidenced by the rapid adoption of technology assisted teaching methods and blended learning models. We all agreed that technology provides students with easy to access information, accelerated learning and fun opportunities to practice what they learn. <clears throat> so let's have a look where we had started and where we are now. In 1960s, the first computer training program started and 1980s, the personal computer era begins. But the actual change start at uh, 1997. Since 1997, the birth of the user graphic interface, UGI and the mouse bring a big change in the learning environment. So in 2000, companies provide, start providing the e-learning courses for the student. So we can uh, safely say the one who born in 1990s In 2000, they start uh, studying and uh, playing with the computer and the electronic devices. So they are called digital natives. Uh, so they have more understanding of the technology. A new wave uh, of the, excuse me, I'm sorry, I think so. One second, let me. Apology for the interruption. Actually, there was, uh, I think, some WhatsApp or some other software was running. So they were making disturbance. So I just switched it over there. So let's have a look uh, that from the 90s, I think so the generation who born in 90s or after 90s, they can call it digital natives. The reason behind, once they start learning something, they do have the engagement and understanding with the learning devices with the digital devices and the smartphones but what happened in 2010 actually that after the 2010 era a new wave of mobile based e-learning uh, introduced over there because the smartphone introduced and anyone who was uh, working with the desktop then they shifted to the uh, laptop and then they migrated to the smartphones smartphone is actually the replacement of the laptop and uh, your 50 or 70 percent usage of laptop reduced after the born or after the introduction of the uh, smartphones but in 2020 especially after the pandemic collaborative mobile on demand and blended learning uh, introduced so this is uh, the whole history which is in front of us that can give us an idea that how we are improving from 1960s till 2022 now all the world in your hand and in in your palm even uh, this with the small smart device everything is all the world is inside that one and a small child even know how to deal with that one and how to Uh, how to prepare uh, some kind of uh, uh, knowledge and how to grab the information and how to share these information with that one. Why this session is important? What is blended learning and why this session is important? This session is important. The reason behind now we are dealing, as I told you in last session, that we are digital migrants. Being a teacher, we are digital migrants because we, are, we, we didn't born with the technology we just adopted so but but the student who is sitting in front of us they are born with the technology they grown up with the technology they do have more uh, like more regular and frequent user of the technology so they are more uh, fluent with the technology than us 
you need to understand that uh, by the time changing in your behavior as a teacher is more important. If you are not going to change your behavior, you're not going to adopt the new technology. It means you are not going to adjust with the new generation, a native digital, digital generation. So blended learning is uh, really important. And this session is going to be very important. And I'm going to tell you one thing that might possible before taking a proper start, I would request all of you might be you are thinking that I always try to force you to participate in this session. And sometimes might be this is um, a little bit annoying for you. But believe me, this is really good, not only for you, for us and for the students as well. You know that how many staff members of Jazan University, more than 1000 staff members, but here in this session, only few members. So I want to make uh, it difference the one who is not in the session and the one who is in the session we are in a in the era of flowing information we all are engaged with different type of uh, whatsapp groups a flow of information is coming but we are not utilizing we're not converting it into the knowledge by this session i will try to make it interactive i will ask you some of the questions i will ask you some of the ideas and my possible some of the ideas which i can grab for you and that can help me to increase my knowledge and i will try to my i will try to share my knowledge with you guys so once you um, are going inside the classroom you do have some more new ideas to engage the students so let's have a look what is blended learning Blended learning is hybrid of traditional face-to-face -face classrooms and e-learning experiences. This type of learning is getting popular in many worldwide renowned universities for improving learning standards, increasing passing rates, uh, and passing rates for what? Passing rates for the exam examination, adding time flexibility and removing distance barriers. The multi-delivery approach to optimize learning outcomes and the cost of content delivery makes blended learning more useful. The term blend in blended learning means integration of digital contents in class instructions or in the activities. So in simple words, we can say blended learning is an immediate stage between in-classroom instructions and delivery of the contents in a fully online mode. Thus, blended learning is a type of digital integration in teaching. So if we have uh, to take a look, uh, the blended learning is different from online learning, which is another type of digital teaching. And in this type of learning is executed in pre-planned chain or combination models. Whereas online learning is executed in either on-campus or off-campus models. So blending of courses gives more course content and course content accessibility, educational effectiveness, effective course interactions and flexibility to teachers for better student engagement. In simple words, you can understand blended learning in these four steps. Number one, hybrid learning. So this is a combination of a, tra a traditional and online learning. You can combine e-learning and face-to-face -face learning you can bring some good like advantages and important points from the face-to-face -face learning and uh, e-learning. So once you combine them, that could be hybrid learning model, or you can go with the method of teaching that integrates technology in your teaching techniques. You can engage different type of technology. So it can be a, like a blended learning or digital media with traditional instructor like classroom activities. You can go with that one as well. Or in the last one, the last point is giving students more flexibility to customize learning. So this is not the era that all the instructor like learning is possible inside the classroom where the teacher always speaking, 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 delivering the knowledge. One way communication is happening over there. Now you can do something good inside the classroom and you can give them some flexibility with, your, with their assignments, with their quizzes to bring all these courses or assignments online so though they can have more flexibility and customized learning um, uh, customized learning ideas over there here i'm going to share with you one of the very short clip and very interesting clip 
that would give you an idea that what is actually uh, blended learning and how it comes and how it introduced. So let's have a look. When you think of learning, what comes to mind? Undoubtedly, your thoughts will turn to the traditional classroom featuring an instructor standing in front of a group of students imparting years of wisdom. In recent years, you may have been exposed to WBT or web-based training, also known as e-learning. The benefits of learning online can't be ignored. Less travel, learning at your own pace at the time of your choosing, and wearing your pajamas to class. Classroom learning typically succeeds or fails based on the abilities of the instructor. WBT learning succeeds or fails based on the quality and instructional design of the learning module. So here is the important point you need to understand. Classroom learning, what is the importance of the classroom learning that is phase two learning that is the important part is teacher because he is the center of uh, uh, the students. He is uh, spreading the knowledge and students are listening to him. But what is important in the web-based trainings, online trainings, that is the content. If you have a very solid content, then you can grab the attention of the students. So what is gonna be happening in blended learning? Just look the next point. So which is the best way to empower your team with the skills they need to be most effective? In short, neither. Rather than making the decision to go with just one form of learning, why not combine the best elements of both? Blended learning does just that. It takes WBT and combines it with classroom instruction to create a learning experience that... That's it. E-learning and classroom learning, once you are trying to bring them together and all the important points and the benefits of e-learning and classroom learning, once you try to combine them, that brings the good results. What kind of results it can be? Produces better learning outcomes in a shorter time frame with a higher job skill effectiveness. So how are these amazing claims achieved? We start with the top of the line, interactive, online learning modules that allow the student to grasp the foundational information at their own pace. Frequent knowledge checks, practice, games, and user interactions keep the student engaged. Post-tests measure the student's command of the content and point to any weak areas that need to be improved. Next, students gather in a classroom environment where the instructor is freed from spending valuable time covering the basics. Instead, the instructor builds upon the foundational knowledge and introduces higher level concepts, which are then related to the student's specific work. This is the really important point. Again, we have to discuss, keep on point that instead, I mean, how the blended learning or e-learning is making it possible for the students or for the teacher is making it more easy. That last session, if someone attended, they know that I discussed over there that how you can make it engage uh, inside the classroom. You can simply share your slides, your, uh, your lesson, which you're gonna be uh, teach in the next day. So the students can go through with that lesson and the basic concept can be clear. And inside the classroom, you do not need to spend again 30 minutes to make them understand that what is the basic concept. Here you can directly go with the high level concept with the basic concept. So this can bring some more good results responsibilities. When appropriate, the class will work through a related project together to put all they are learning into action. Be warned, however, that simply because you have WBT paired with a classroom event does not guarantee a successful blended learning outcome. The Opusworks cloud-based learning platform has been finely tuned over many years to orchestrate successful blended learning classes for both students and instructors. Modules, testing, assignments, materials, games, videos, class dates, message boards, instructor chat, class polling, project tracking, reporting, statistics, and more all combine to form the backbone of the learning experience. When teamed with properly trained instructors, the results are simply unbeatable. So that's from blended learning. Can I ask the question over here? Do you understand what is blended learning? Can you answer me in one sentence only, please? In 30 seconds, then we, I'm gonna start it uh, next slide. In 30 seconds, can you please answer me what is blended learning? What did you understand about the blended learning? 30 seconds, I'm waiting for your answer, please. 
What did you understand till now for the blended learning? Hello. Anybody there? I think everyone joined and left. But I can see there are too many people in the session. Okay, that's great. Integrating digital teaching and traditional teaching together. Very good. Dr. Sheikh Shafra, that's great. Uh, it is mixture of all learning tools. What kind of mix mixtures? Can you play, please explain it? Mixture of what? The question was, what did you get with the blended learning experience? That what is blended learning? What is your idea about the blended learning? Integrated learning styles. Uh, you want to say, Dr. Nasreen, that uh, the e-learning and the best of the e-learning and best of the face-to-face -face learning, you need to combine and that is blended learning, is it? Yeah, that's great, that's great. Anyone else? Yeah, that is, you, you can grab something more important and advantageous thing from the online learning and face-to-face -face learning. You cannot say that online learning is 100% um, can bring the results or face-to-face -face, uh, teaching can bring the results. So both are important but both have their advantages and disadvantages. So what we do, we gonna combine the advantages of face-to-face -face learning and online learning in one model to, uh, to present and bring some more good results that we call blended learning. Only two teachers understand what is blended learning. All others are left, I think. So, okay, no problem. Mix of online and classroom learning, great. Thanks for the participation for the teachers and rest I am looking for, inshallah, in coming uh, slides. So let's have a look. I'm gonna have a very uh, quick look about the models of the blended learning because understanding of the models of the blended learning is also important. The reason uh, the majority of blended learning programs resembles one of four models and uh, what are these models? What it gonna start, uh, take start with the rotational model, flex model, self-blend model, and enriched virtual model. A self-blend model also called a Lockhart model. So let's take a look in detail that how they work it. Rotation model. This is really just a variation of a learning stations model that teachers have been using for years. There is a set schedule by which students have face-to-face -face time with their teachers and then move to online work. This model seems to be most popular in the following environment. Number one, elementary classrooms in which teachers have already used and are comfortable with traditional learning stations. The second one, elementary classrooms in which students can be divided based upon skill level in reading and math. The students who are performing well in math but not in the reading may have face-to-face -face time with the teacher for reading before rotating the online learning stations for math. So teachers are able to give struggling students more individual assistance based upon their needs. So this is rotation model. First, you're gonna give them teacher-led instructions and then you're gonna bring them back on the online instructions. But here, for example, some of the students are not good. They can come and face-to-face uh, -face meet with the teacher. They can uh, give them solutions and send them back online. So this is a complete um, a circle of uh, rotation model, teacher led instructions, collaborative activities and stations, and online learning. <clears throat> and the next one is flex model. 
The majority of the curriculum is delivered via online instructions with teachers on hand for face-to-face -face facilitation, consultation, and support. This model relies heavily on online instructions delivery with teachers acting as facilitators rather than as primary deliverers of the instructions. This model appears to be most used and most successful in the following environment. What kind of environment? Alternative school settings in which the majority of the students' population is considered to be at risk. Traditional classroom settings have traditionally not been successful for these students. Second, alternative school settings in which students are involved in the work study programs have attendance problems or have been placed in a part-time schooling program. Or as a rule, the grade level for the flex model is secondary. Important thing is that you can set, set the flex model where, where the traditional classroom, building of the traditional classroom is not possible, or you are targeting the students who are jobians, they are doing work, but they cannot uh, attend the classes regularly. So you can bring them online classes for them. So that is flex model. model. <laughs> The next one is uh, that is self blend model, or it is also called a la carte model. A la carte is basically French word, and in English we call it a la carte model. This model allows coursework beyond the offered in a traditional setting in a specific school or district. Student participate in traditional classes but then enroll in courses to supplement the regular programs of study. This model is basically particularly beneficial in the following circumstances. What kind of circumstances? A course that is not offered by the school may be taken by a student who wants additional learning in a specific content field. Students who wish advanced placement courses for early college credit can enroll in courses designed and improved for such. Students who are highly motivated and fully independent learners. So this type of models can be adopted as an additional study program. For example, some programs are being like introduced in the summer vacation or during the classes, uh, college or university introduced the, um, a new subject or a new type of projects or something like online learning platform so the students can be engaged over there. So this is basically self-paced or self blend learning. So students undertake traditional classes before enrolling in online course work to support their studies. So they can enroll in the traditional classes and then they can enroll on the online classes for their uh, to, to enhance their study. And the last one is enriched virtual model. There is a combination of two face-to-face -face supplementations and the home online instructions and content. How does it work? This model is complete opposite of a traditional face-to-face -face instructional environment. Students work from remote locations, for example, their homes, and receive all of their instructions via online platforms. Usually, there are opportunities to check in with the course teachers and to engage in online messaging if an explanation is needed. School and uh, districts that that type of offers this model find that the number of students opting for it increasing like annually it is increasing to adopt this type of model the model works for the following students what type of students can be engaged with this model uh, students with chronic illness or handicap who find it difficult to attend schools uh, students whose job or other obligations demand flexibility to be in school at hours during which traditional schools are not in operation. Students who are highly motivated and who want to progress much faster than would be allowed to traditional school settings. Can I have one example from you guys? One example I needed in race virtual model which you experienced in, I mean like you already experienced, I know. Can you give me one example of in rich virtual model? One example, please. 
can anyone please give me one example of enriched virtual model which you already experienced in recent past no blackboard is a platform which can be used for the learning perspective blackboard is available or i mean like you know, all the lms available in jazan university since like uh, 2010 but my question is in recent past what did you learn I mean, like what what kind of model you used in rich virtual model i you use this model in recent past but can you give me one example why did you why did you use this virtual model in recent past anyone do you have an idea please 30 seconds that's the best answer from dr nasreen and okay dr sheikh shakra okay due to pandemic in march uh, 2019 all the classes been like uh, migrated to online and we use blackboard for this enriched virtual model because all the classes were not able to bring students face to face so we use this model virtual model and we use the virtual classrooms all the students have to present on the same time and they do have the discussion time and all these things yes march 18th i believe only two two participants in the session dr Srin and dr chakra okay one more okay fine but in the list i can see a long list over here please don't stay in the silent mode just I mean like participate and uh, we can have more interesting discussions inside the discussion board okay we I mean like we discussed about the uh, example about the covid due to pandemic we were unable so this is a special situation as well that where you can use it uh, uh, the enriched virtual model uh, which is really helpful i believe if this type of models were not available during the COVID, we can go back in the stone age. I mean like, oh, the education is the only thing that affected a, a lot. I mean like, not all the countries do have all these facilities, but um, Saudi Arabia, uh, Alhamdulillah, um, I mean like all the resources they provided. And I believe there is no one day uh, stop of the education only I mean like we, uh, because all the environment was already available and we put them in the practical environment by shifting all the physical classes to the uh, to online classes. So here is a small uh, video clip I'm going to share with you that can give you a much more easy idea about these four blended uh, learning models. So have a look with me. The definition of blended learning is a formal educational program in which a student learns at least in part through online learning with some element of student control over time, place, path, and or pace, at least in part in a supervised brick and mortar location away from home. And the modalities along each student's learning path within a course or subject are connected to provide an integrated learning experience. The majority of blended learning programs resemble one of the four mo models I'll describe in this video, and they include the rotation, the flex, a la carte, and enriched virtual. Now, the rotation model includes four sub-models, one of which is the flipped or upside-down classroom, and I'll describe that in another video. Here are the definitions of these four blended learning models. Number one is the rotation model, and this is a program in which, within a given course or subject, students rotate between learning modalities, at least one of which is online learning. Other modalities might include activities such as small group or full class instruction, group projects, individual tutoring, and pencil and paper assignments. Number two is the flex model, and this is a program in which the online learning is the backbone of student learning, even if it directs students to offline activities at times. Students move on an individually customized fluid schedule among learning modalities and the teacher of record is on site. 
Now, the teacher of record or other adults provide face-to-face -face support on a flexible and adaptive as-needed basis through activities such as small group instruction, group projects, and individual tutoring. Some implementations may have substantial face-to-face -face support and others may have minimal. Uh, some flex models may have face-to-face uh, -face certified teachers who supplement the learning on a daily basis, whereas others may provide little face-to-face -face enrichment. Others may have combinations of, of different kinds of staffing. Number three is the a la carte model. And this is a program in which students take one or more courses entirely online with an online teacher of record and at the same time continue to have brick and mortar educational experiences. Students may take the, the online courses either on the brick and mortar campus or off site. And this differs from full time online learning and the enriched virtual model because it's not a whole school experience. And number four is the enriched virtual model. And this is a whole school experience in which Within each course, students divide their time between attending a brick and mortar campus and learning remotely using online delivery of content and instruction. And many enriched virtual programs began as full-time online schools and then developed blended programs to provide students with brick and mortar school experiences. The enriched virtual model differs from the flipped classroom because enriched virtual programs students seldom attend the brick and mortar campus every day. And it differs from the a la carte model because it's a whole school experience, not a course by course model. So can I ask one question over here? What is a la carte model? What is an idea about la carte model? A self blend model. Anyone have an idea? What is a la carte model? Okay, anyone do have an idea? Self blend model. What is self blend model? That is also called a la carte model. Two times we just discussed in last slides that uh, a la carte model is what is it? For those who are working, uh, like teaching in class, the courses and sending different activities through WhatsApp of the Anyone else? Do anyone have a better idea? Online materials. Okay, fine. Anyone else, please? You're very close. You both are very close, but not exactly the Lockhart model uh, like work like in this way. Online materials, fine, but we can say some some more exp uh, any explanation needed or to use course which are important. That is the best best answer. Look, Chakra, best answer that is that a course which aren't being like provided from the school and that is available only online for the students who want to attend that one. Okay, uh, Dr. Altani, that is students should attend traditional class before enrolling in online course. A little bit different, please. I think you're mixing it with another model. A Lacquer model is like a course that is not offering inside the classroom or from the school and that course is available online and some students need like for example in uh, the vacation or in summer vacation some additional courses being offered online and students want to improve their studies so they can join the courses online they that is called a lacquer model or a blend model so move move to the next that is what is the components of the blended learning components of the blended learning is really important to discuss because in this session i'm gonna share some useful softwares and tools with you guys which can be easily uh, you can use inside the classroom and you can improve your learning capabilities and understanding and engagement of the students inside the classroom and outside the classroom so be with me we're going to have very interesting uh, slides in coming uh, like time so we're going to take start what are the components of uh, blended learning
couch. That's it. There are multiple components uh, on the screen. You can see that is a launch hook, introducing new content or skills, formative assessment and checks for understanding, active processing with peers and authentic learning experience. So we're gonna discuss one by one with that one. First, we're gonna have a look on launch and hook. What does it mean? To foster students investment in a unit, capture their attention from the start. Potential hooks include introducing, uh, what kind of introduction, like you have to introduce novelty, a connection, a puzzle or challenge, or a chance for students to make predictions. And how you can do it, this type of hook in the face-to-face, -face, make a connection between students and content. For example, teacher introduced a geography unit with the essential questions, and what is the question? What cause, I mean, what type of causes change over time? And student answers about themselves, their families and their communities launched and investigations of the same question regarding geographical change. But the same thing, how you can hook up online because the face-to-face -face learning is difficult, different because the students are sitting in front of you and you can ask them in a different way. But once they are not in front of you, they are online, how you can ask and how you can try this way. Try novelty, relevant video clips, memes, or comic, uh, I mean like comic videos you can use for online launch pairs. And uh, I always prefer and uh, suggest that uh, I mean, like once you are preparing the presentations, for, especially for the online students, you have to go with the visual effects. More visual effects and more videos can enhance the knowledge and uh, connectivity between the students instead of putting too many uh, text on the slides that can making it boring after five to 10 minutes. Because there is a research that after seven to 10 minutes, uh, the participants losing the uh, uh, interest uh, with the presentation if it is not good looking or if it is just boring like putting all the text over there so online you can put relevant video clips relevant video clips mean clips that relate with your lesson current lesson current chapter or with your study material and you can bring some memes some comic ideas so that can bring and make it more interesting how an English teacher began a study on the effect of the narrations and uh, an English teacher began a study uh, in the form of effect of narrator's uh, perspective by posting several optical illusions with varied interpretations and asking students to comment explaining what they saw. So this type of questions can grab their attentions and they can answer in a better way. The next one is introducing new content or skills. Instructions can be delivered face-to-face -face or online. It can be synchronous or it can be asynchronous, uh, whether live or recorded. Uh, be sure one, model skills and ask students to give them a try. And second, chunk content to avoid overwhelming students with too much at once. After each chunk, built in time for students to process the material because in chunks, the knowledge can be delivered more easily. Some of the students, not all the students are getting all the thing, uh, I mean like collectively, or you are uh, just making them, uh, I mean like knowledge, I mean sending them the knowledge, information, information, but they are not getting all these, uh, con they cannot convert that information into knowledge so in the form of chunks small pieces of the information you are sharing with them asking them some questions and then sharing the next portion they can grab the idea more easily how you can do it in the face-to-face -face environment build in spots to prompt and pause allowing students to answer questions share examples and use responses cards you just throw the question and then pause and wait until they answer and they uh, start taking the participation inside the classroom but how you can do it in a similar way online you can 
provide direct instructions via video and be sure to include opportunities to pause and post along the way for students to share their moments, the questions and examples with that form. So that would be the best way to engage the students online. If we have to think that formative assessment and checks for understanding how it work, it simply align formative assessments with clear learning goals to monitor students' progress towards those goals. Chunk goals as you do content and formality, like assess after uh, each chunk, and you can administer ongoing checks for understanding to individuals. You can go with the pairs or small groups to determine what's making sense to students, what's confusing them, or where they have misconceptions. Review these student results to determine the nature of follow-up tasks. So the best thing is that you, you need to focus where they are getting confused. If they are getting confused with some kind of formative assessments and checks for understanding, so you can understand, you can bring them face to face, you can send them assignments or something like that and uh, make these confusions uh, clear, then you can go ahead at that time. And face to face, you can capitalize on face to face time by administering group checks for understanding using whiteboards, think pair shares, discussions and debate to reveal shared understandings and misconceptions. Ending class with a traditional exit slip and that can help shape subsequent instructions to more accurately uh, and it can meet students' needs as well. But how you can prepare online? Simply use digital platforms to monitor students' understanding during online learning. Students learning about different triangles might draw examples on co-formative or post pictures of examples on Padlet. These online learning checks reveals if uh, retouching is needed, uh, streamlining instruction is uh, required or not required because this type of checks can actively process with peers and uh, these all uh, things can be formative assessments and checks for understanding. The next one is active processing with peers. You can provide students with the opportunity to practice skills or apply them to a new context. In the company of peers, at their best, processing tasks will engage students with learning goals and with one and another. And again, we're gonna discuss that how we can do it in the face-to-face. -face. Simply, students can collaborate in traditional small groups or via individual devices using Google Docs or slides. These forums also allows groups to present their work to the full class by sharing links or projecting products on the classroom screen. You can use face-to-face -face time to provide like explicit instructions based on students' needs revealed by students' collaborative work. So that can help everyone to understand that how in the face-to-face -face learning environment, we can go ahead with this one. But once it turn it on online, you can engage students in meaningful online interactions with peers through discussion posts in your school's learning management system. Like in our Blackboard, we do have the discussion board over there. You can create uh, the discussion topic for the students. Even you can uh, divide into the groups and you can give them the different discussion topics. You can engage them online via uh, these type of platforms. Or you can invite interactions by asking classmates to comment on one another's posts. You can give an idea and you can uh, engage them with each other. You give them yeah, threats, uh, me like threshold, me like there is one threat and ask them, okay, discuss with each other and you can have a better idea. <clears throat> and students are learning in a better way in this uh, a technique. So you can use it this way. Or students can also use Google Docs or Slides to maintain the flow of collaborative work between digital and face-to-face -face settings. That's all components we like we discuss uh, till now four components that are very important hook or launch, how you can hook the students 
you how you can introduce the new content or skills how you can go ahead with assessment and checks and uh, how actively processing with the peers how they can actively collaborate with each other now the last component uh, gonna be discussed over here that is authentic learning experience it's important to provide motivating tasks that invite students into learning unlike isolated drills such tasks can easily uh, be transitioned between schools and home if they're grounded in authentic connections to the real world and what is uh, authentic connections for example investigating real world issues solving problems set in real world context using skills and tools of professionals or to students personal lives uh, pursuing areas of personal interest or relevance so this is authentic learning experience you're gonna discuss with them the real world issues how you can do it in the face to face introduce tasks in face to face or remote synchronous settings so that students have opportunities to ask questions if you plan to use digital tools uh, like there are too many tools canva or anchor uh, these type of tools introduce those in class so that the student can experiment and become comfortable while you are there to troubleshoot all these type of problems <clears throat> but once you uh, return back to online here the environment is different so the technique should be different and continuing work online is more successful when students have access to uh, their uh, colleagues their um, co-fellows for collaboration through google docs or chats or many other platforms you can um, like interact them with the, uh, for the discussion and they can have a place to post questions that surface during work and you can take advantage of flexible online learning experiences by scheduling opportunities for students to interact with mentors if you have the interaction with the mentor with the teachers you can ask the question over there you can get back the results at that time so that were the components that was really important to discuss i uh, took time to explain all these components because by understanding these components you will understand that what is the importance of uh, blended learning and how we can engage students in higher education this is the most important part of uh this presentation now onward we're gonna be like shifted to the practical knowledge some software is gonna be shared with you so be in touch with me uh here we're gonna discuss about strategies to engage students this is the main topic of our presentation that how you can engage them in the blended learning but why we took some time to make you understand what is blended learning because now you are ready to understand that blended learning is not just uh, an option this is important for our future uh, generation and especially for the education system the one who is away from the technology they are going to be away from the practical fields now the teacher who do not want to learn the new techniques who are still weak with the uh, like interaction of the computer and they are afraid to interact with the technology they cannot go ahead they can stop they cannot learn they cannot engage with the digital natives because we have i mean like we are interacting with the digital natives and being a digital migrant we need to work hard to understand the digital technologies and every day we are interacting with the technology from morning till night we do have our smartphones with us so for the learning purpose we do need to engage these uh, devices with the students to bring some good results so how you can engage it there are multiple ways to engage students uh, you can go ahead with the usage of interactive softwares to engage the students different type of softwares which i'm gonna share with you that what type of softwares and how you can use them inside the classroom visual and storytelling content this is what i just discussed a couple of slides earlier that instead of putting too many um, like text uh, on on your presentation you have to go with some pngs some visual effects some uh, picture some small videos that can tell the story of your content so that can be and uh, there is a research that for example if you listen something if you read something for example you can 
like uh, your memory can be washed out 75% of the data, but if you're listening something, might possible 50% of the data can be removed. But if you are watching something, if you're viewing something, there is some visual effects and there is a storytelling content, uh, then 75 to 80% data would remain after the session as well. So use the visuals in your presentations to make it more interactive. The next one is use automation LMS to monitor progress and communication uh, with the students. You're already using this uh, part. So uh, no need to discuss in detail because Blackboard is the, uh, uh, the platform which is we are using from long time and that is a uh, best example for the LMS to monitor. But there is one clip I will share with you the, the, how it is impactful for engagement of the student. Validate learning and assign peer-based projects. You can validate learning and assign some uh, kind of projects uh, and ask them uh, to go ahead and do it online or um, submit online as in the form of assignments or you can ask them in the form of quizzes or different projects can be allocated in the form of groups you can engage them. So here we are blended learning tools for effective trainings, we do have a blended learning tools, what kind of tools we do have. The best tool is that educational games. You can have educational games and how you can go ahead with these type of blended learning tools for effective um, implementation. As I told you that implement uh, an LMS that is already implemented in Saudi Arabia that is implemented me like earlier we were using uh, two different LMS systems but right now we are using the Blackboard. Blackboard is one of the best uh, LMS uh, in the world. The reason behind right now in the market, more than 800 vendors are offering different type of LMS systems. In Middle East, almost 96% universities are using the Blackboard. Blackboard do have a very user-friendly environment and interface. Once you log in, you if you have a little idea about the computer and little knowledge of um, understanding with the computer, you can easily use all these components inside the Blackboard. Earlier, we do have uh, different, um, uh, like e um, that was uh, uh, two different LMS we were using over there, but they were a little bit difficult, the infrastructure and environment, but Blackboard is best for this one. And educational games, you can go ahead with this one. As I told you that educational games are a great way to consolidate and reinforce all the knowledge you have given your students during a training or in a classroom. In educational games, the students are often divided into teams that play against each other. And every member uses his her mobile device where there is a journal screen with directions and results updated in real time. In our experience, this is one of the best type of blended learning apps and educational games are the go-to solution for the audience because participants become so interested, they don't want to leave the class and these type of educational games are like there are too many frequent ask questions, uh, cars, interactive posters, etc. There are too many different type of games that are available inside the classroom and you can engage them and you can have uh, educational game related to your topics. Digital badges, this is another, we do have a little um, details in coming slide. You can award them different type of uh, badges uh, these can be virtual badges, uh, online badges available if someone in like one of the group, if uh, uh, you, you provided them different type of projects and uh, one of the uh, group uh, did it very well, you can assign them some badges. So there is a competition between the uh, classmates so they can try their best to become on front to, to get the digital, digital badges. Interactive online lectures, pretty simple. We already discussed this one. Interactive online means like you're gonna bring some kind of very good slides, presentations with visual effects that can impact that lessons and uh, students as well. 
Here I do have a small video clip with you about the implementation of the LMS. Once you implement the LMS, how it can affect your like uh, teaching skills and how it can make it easy for you to maintain all the progress of the students one by one. So let's have a look. The new learning experience is supported by our ecosystem of integrated solutions that span K-12 education and higher ed. Blackboard Learn, our flagship LMS, has been redesigned to support the changing needs of learners. With the new Ultra experience, learners receive curated notifications about their courses. Course content is instantly available and interacting with classmates and instructors is easy. With Blackboard Collaborate, learning has no boundaries. Rich video and audio create a seamless learning experience and learners can easily study with one another in and out of class. And our brand new BB Student app ties all of our capabilities together into a single contained learner-centric solution. This simple, easy to use mobile design helps learners move quickly through the app. Students can view course content and track progress through their course. And video and audio collaboration is fully integrated into the mobile product for learning on the go. This is a lifelong journey, a twisting path of rich experiences and personal and professional growth. And as learners experience personalized and connected education, they build and refine their identity, gain confidence and knowledge, and transform their lives, their community, and society. This is the new learning experience from Blackboard. That was that how it is make it easy for you guys um, and we already using this uh, blackboard so no need to discuss more in detail you already have an idea let's have a look about the educational games we already discussed that uh, interactivity gamifications and equipments and educationist and uh, these type of things can be done by educational games um, we already discussed in detail for this slides and previous slides so no need to stay over here for longer time because you know that this is a cycle psychologically that if you put something in the form of game it can increase uh, the interest of staying over there for example there is uh, i i think sir during the pandemic there was one of the game was um, uh, really much popular on the facebook that was ludo and People were sitting in their home in different locations and they connected using the Facebook and they were playing over there and hours and hours they are playing over there and they don't feel that it's getting late. So educational games are like this. If you are putting the educational games in your content, it means you are engaging the students, um, the digital natives and uh, like uh, you can inviting them for the interest of the studies over there. Digital badges, uh, similarly, digital badges in education help educators appreciate students for what they have accomplished. Uh, these accomplishments can be linked uh, to everything, including learning positive behavior, effort skills, and etc. It's again psychologically affect the student's mind that uh, if they are getting even not in the form of money, in the form of digital badges, certificates, or something like that, it means you are encouraging them to participate in the activities of the education. How you can monitor an intervention for the blended learning? Because monitoring without monitoring, everyone uh, lose their trust. Even for example, if the students do not have an idea, that like if uh, they are thinking that there is no uh, intervention there is no monitoring from the mentor or teacher it means they will not try to learn so you need to uh, streamline organize your education by uh, i mean like putting some kind of monitoring tools and intervention for blended learning so that would bring some good results so what is that just have a look about this video clip
we don't ensure there is some form of monitoring, learners can feel their work isn't being checked and can quickly disengage. It is therefore an important part of blended learning and should be embedded into your strategy. Some suggestions to assist the monitoring of blended learning could include monitoring of student work to take place on at least a weekly basis to allow for timely intervention. Automated assessment should take place in tasks as much as possible to assist in tracking progression and to minimise marking load. And the use of digital badges to acknowledge achievement and celebrate success. There are ways in which you can re-engage learners if you see them start to disengage. Here are some useful intervention tips. Use effective tools to help identify when a learner is losing engagement. Ascertain which aspect of the learning they are struggling with. Some may be disengaging due to practical reasons, such as issues with technology, or not able to join at a particular time due to other commitments. The need to be aware and opportunity to be flexible is imperative. Host intervention sessions where possible. You could also try offering an anonymous space online, such as a Padlet wall, where learners can note down which areas. So here, what you can do it with the feedback, you can go ahead with the user feedback, you can send them assessment like uh, the assignment, the form of assignments or quizzes and learning plans, you're gonna share with them, sharing learning. So all these checks and balancing and monitoring can make it more effective your online learning or blended learning. I would like more support in offering alternative assessment opportunities to give all learners the chance to demonstrate knowledge in a way that best suits them. Developing learning plans in conjunction with the learner to set short, achievable goals. Sharing successful intervention strategies with wider teaching teams. By implementing a variety of these tips and sharing best practices with your peers, not only do you get the best out of your own learners, many more will be positively impacted and have a better experience. So how we can go ahead with interactive online lecture tools, what kind of interactive tools we do have it. Let's have a look about these interactive tools. And there are uh, some very interesting tools that already we do have it like Microsoft Teams, WooClap and Zoom and all these uh, tools can be used for the online and blended learning. And I wanna tell you that here, Microsoft Teams is licensed version available uh for for the students for the staff members as well i think so here and some other free softwares that also available let's have a look how to use different tools to make your lecture more interactive you're about to give an online lecture to a small group of up to 15 participants or a large group of more than 50 participants are you wondering what tools to use how to use them and how to optimize the use of these tools to gain the best outcome in terms of interaction in class? Then keep watching and through this video you will get acquainted with the different tools and tips on how best to use these tools. Pick a video conferencing tool for delivering your lecture, for example Microsoft Teams or Zoom. Think and see if it would be better to plan interactions with the whole team or to have discussions in smaller subgroups. The different features in video conferencing tools help with making your lecture more interactive. Perhaps it would be a good idea to use whiteboards to increase opportunities for collaboration during classes. The chat function gives the opportunity to stimulate interaction in writing even during the main lecture. With emojis, participants can give quick signals to the presenter. Thumbs up emoji, too fast or too slow emoji, with polls, questions can be prepared in advance so you can check for quick reflections. To attract the participants' attention, try sharing your PowerPoint while you are providing explanations on a topic. 
one very useful feature of video conferencing tools which allow meeting organizers to split the participants into smaller groups for things like brainstorming sessions or group work discussions are virtual breakout rooms. It is essential to plan in advance and make sure you have a clear assignment so participants return to the plenary session where subgroups can share their answers via poll, via chat, by turning on microphone and giving a short summary, or just via thumbs up icon or other emoticons. For interactions in plenary sessions, try using an audience response tool like WooClap. Using these function tools, like polls and quizzes, can easily be used to stimulate interaction. For things to work smoothly, make sure you have a clear question, give enough time to everyone to answer the questions, and then share the answers and provide explanations. Quizzes also help with interaction. To add more thrill to your planned interaction, you can combine quizzes with a small competition. Now, if you're looking for a common area that students can individually or in groups list their thoughts and ideas, then you can introduce Padlet or idea boards in your lecture. These are simply virtual walls with post-its. These tools can provide a quick overview of answers to the questions raised during the lecture. If you use a complex scheme or explain a complex process, then you can record it beforehand so you don't miss a step in your explanation. This creates a break for you in your lecture. This is one of the best idea I want to share with you that, for example, you're going to uh, share some kind of software that how you can use this software or you're going to have some practical sessions instead of doing all the steps practically online during the session that would make it more worse. For example, your computer shut down, all the process gone down. For example, there is some kind of problem with the uh, login issues or something like that you can stuck over there. So I would suggest that you have to record all these steps well before in time, well before in classroom and this video clip without the voiceover, you just share with them and explain them, okay? You have to receive this page. You need to enter your user ID and password and then hit the login button and you would be login over here and you would have this kind of environment over there. So if you need a smooth, uh, like uh, lecture in your classroom, do not go ahead with the practical sessions uh, in front of the students or in front of the audience. At that time, it's better you have to record it earlier and you can just explain over there. That would have more better impact, I believe. So you can take a breath. This is also a change for your audience in avoiding a monotonous lecture. To record a screencast of your presentation or simply to record yourself explaining the course, use my media site. You can also share your mini clips through my media site. Keep in mind that recording a mini lecture should be worth the effort. So record a mini clip if you want to use this clip many times. As a final take home message, there are many tools to help you design an interactive lecture. You just need to plan the proper integration of these tools into your lecture. So there is one more benefit for the recording of the practical sessions or any software you wanna uh, share with the students over there. For example, you have recorded all the steps one time at home and you do have 10 sessions over there. You do not need to worry about that, uh, that okay, I do not have the internet uh, inside the classrooms. How can I uh, go ahead for the login screens? And I'm not receiving some kind of um, uh, like authentication code over there. So do you have 10 sessions, you have recorded video with you, you can explain very easily in all the sessions. Create interactive environment as educators in classrooms. How you can create interactive environment? Let's have a look with this one. Yes. Now I'm gonna share with you two very advanced level uh, web-based environment, which can give you an idea and you can use them inside the classroom with your students. But for example, your students do have the smart devices or you are inside the computer lab and you can engage them with you by using some kind of uh, environment online environment and they can be interactive and at the and the same time you're asking some questions and uh, you're collecting the data from the students via using the some specific links so they can be engaged the first one is mentimeter 
let's have overview that how does it work then next slide i will tell you that how it works and how you can use it inside the classroom there is too much uh, one-way communications in lectures and uh, workshops and in regular business meetings and what we're trying to do is a very very simple but powerful interaction tool and this is mentimeter everybody wants to be heard and the process of using mentimeter is quite simple you create a question click start presenting the audience then just grab their phone go to a specific url enters the code and submits the answer. When you visualize the answers, it makes people think and reflect, and then you can start a discussion from there. With Mentimeter, everybody has an equal opportunity to, to voice their opinion. You're not affected by anybody in the room. The input you provide is, is unbiased, and when you're part of the result, you want to motivate the result. Mentimeter makes people interact in a new and innovative way. When you open up for people to voice their opinion, people feel involved, so the interaction creates a constructive discussion. Mentimeter makes meeting more fun, efficient and effective. That's Mentimeter, one of the best tools you can use inside the classroom. Then now you have a look how to use multimeter with PowerPoint. I mean, like because all of us are using PowerPoint for the presentations. So how we can embed the multimeter in PowerPoint and how it is effective. Yes, Dr. Rima, please share the link for registration. Registration is still open. And I would like to remind you all guys that registration, without registration, you would not be able to receive the e-certificate. So if you need a certificate, you need to get registered. And the second most important part that you have to rename your name in the list of uh, the session now. Right now, you just go in front of your name. There are three dots, click on that one, rename. And front of your name, you have to put the employee ID. So I can easily search out and allocate the e-certificate for you all, for all of you. But registration is mandatory. So we're gonna share the link for registration for you and you have to get registered for this session. Okay, let's have a look how to use Mentimeter with PowerPoint. Now, there are a couple of ways in which you can use Mentimeter together with PowerPoint, but what a lot of people don't know is you can create long and beautiful presentations directly in Mentimeter. And let me show you what I mean here. So here I have my team meeting presentation and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new slide and scroll down to the content slides. And here I can add bullet points, images, headers, just like I would in PowerPoint or Google Slides, for example. And this allows you to create longer and more dynamic presentations all while using the app. Now, if you already have an existing PowerPoint presentation, it's really easy to upload your PowerPoint directly to Mentimeter. And to do that, I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna click the import button. And what this allows you to do is allows you to import either PowerPoint presentations, keynote presentations, and even PDFs directly to Mentimeter. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click here and I'm going to select my uh, prototyping presentation here. And as you can see, it'll upload directly to Mentimeter. I'm going to go ahead and close this window and it'll upload in the background. Now that my PowerPoint is uploaded to Mentimeter, I'll find it at the bottom of my presentation. And here we can see I have my entire PowerPoint presentation directly in Mentimeter. And this allows me also to add the uh, beloved reactions here, the heart, the thumbs up and the cat if we like that. And this is a really smooth and easy way to keep everything nice and tidy in Mentimeter. Now, the quickest way to use Mentimeter together with PowerPoint is to use them side by side. And I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So here I have my uh, Mentimeter presentation ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and select present so I have it in full screen. Then I'm gonna use a uh, command tab or control tab if you're using a PC and open up my PowerPoint presentation. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in full screen mode as well. And now I have both presentations in full screen. 
and I can go through my PowerPoint presentation and when I want to add audience interaction, I simply select Command or Control Tab and switch between the two. Mentimeter works best if you're using it directly in the web browser, but we do also offer a way in which you can use your PowerPoint presentation and have a Mentimeter question in it. Now, this requires you to have an Office 365 subscription, as well as having the uh, PowerPoint 2016 version or later. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to Insert in my PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to select Get Add-ins. And here I can search for Mentimeter and add it to my add-ins. And then I go back to my Mentimeter presentation. I copy the slide that I want to use in my PowerPoint and simply paste it directly in the slide link. And here I can then use my PowerPoint presentation and have a Mentimeter question in it. So here is a good news for you that you can use the Mentimeter with the Office 365 and Office 365 to have the subscription for Jazan University. Anyone can use Office 365 free of cost without any subscription. You just simply go to office.com and click on login and use the login screen with your user ID and password, the user ID for your email ID and the password you can use it and any phone number which is uh, you already linked with the Jamia Jazan, you can receive one authentication code and you can log over there and you can use the Office 365 free of cost. I hope you understand and enjoyed about um, Mentimeter. This is one of the best tool which can be used inside the classroom with the students or uh, between the teachers uh, for the training sessions. Here is another very interesting tool that is Kahoot. This is what is Kahoot. Kahoot is an online game-based learning platform. It allows teachers, organizations, and parents uh, to set up fun and web-based learning for others. So this is again, very interesting uh, topic and very interesting tool, power of presentation tool. So let's have a look about this one. Hi there, I'm Evelyn. And today I'll show you how you can create and deliver an interactive presentation everyone will enjoy, remember, and learn from. Did you know that even when a topic is found interesting, the average person can only focus on a presentation for seven to 10 minutes at most? How can you ensure your audience will connect with your presentation? Firstly, make your audience the focus of your presentation. And by that, we mean interaction. Involve your audience throughout your entire presentation, not just with the Q&A at the very end. Also, make sure your audience remembers the key content you want them to, which is where reinforcement quiz questions come in. Let's explore exactly how you can create a great presentation with Kahoot. Log into your Kahoot account and click Create. You can import an entire deck of slides into Kahoot. Click Import Slides and follow the instructions. We support PowerPoint, Keynote and PDF. Remember, you can also export Google Slides as a PDF. Make sure you're happy with your slides before you import them. Once uploaded, you can move your slides around or delete some of them, but you won't be able to edit the content in them directly. Add interaction questions in between slides, for example, polls or word clouds, to give your audience a voice and do a pulse check. You can add these in at any point during your presentation. Next, reinforce your key points with quiz questions at the end of a section of your presentation, as well as at the very end. That way, you'll know which content sticks and if you've communicated it well. After your presentation, review the data on the question responses to understand if you successfully landed your key points. Make sure you adapt your presentation content and style accordingly for next time. Now let's go over some top tips and best practices for making your presentation super engaging and memorable. Half as long as twice as good. Prioritize your content by identifying three to five key things you want your audience to take away. And make sure no more than 50% of your presentation is made up out of slides. The other 50% being audience participation or review quiz questions to reinforce these do you understand that why I always asking you to participate, to be interactive? Because the research says that only 50% uh, 
is is the presentation and the rest of the 50 percent of the session should be the participation from the uh participants but when uh, we ask questions or we try to engage you guys I mean like one or two participants are over there who are answering but none of others are taking interest believe me by interacting with the trainer you can have more ideas and you can generate more ideas by asking some questions or uh, me like making it more interactive so when uh, i mean like it's a request that when i ask you something at least try to answer if you don't know doesn't matter we are not trying to force you to learn something forcefully but at least try to participate take advantage of youtube videos to bring your content to life but add relevant clips you don't have to include the entire video for the best experience, get participants to join the presentation via the Kahoot app. If not, they should disable the screensaver mode on their devices so they don't lose connection throughout. When hosting a presentation, spend no more than 60 seconds on each slide to keep engagement high. Take advantage of real-time feedback. Use polls and word clouds to deliver a continuous Q&A throughout your presentation. Another very good idea about the presentations that do not stick with your one slide for more than 60 seconds so idea is create more slides stay less on the slide and you can have more engagement with the students over there not just at the end if you want to assign your presentation as a self-paced challenge so the audience goes through it on their own device in their own time make sure to add more slides to give context you won't be there to give the explanations live as a presenter, there's no better feedback to understand in real time how much your audience has taken your key content on board, and you can make every meeting a huge success. And that's how you can deliver interactive presentations. So uh, our session is going to be like in the concluding side, we are almost end of the sessions and we have discussed a lot about the blended learning strategies uh we take and start with what is uh, blended learning then we move to the models and then um, like tools of the blended learning and we have discussed different different software which are really impactful inside the classroom if you're going to use all these softwares with you and it's really easy um before taking start for the benefits of the blended learning i want to tell you again that you do have a free subscriptions uh, towards like a Microsoft 365, Office 365, that is online software. You simply go to Microsoft Office website, that is www.office.com and simply click on login, put your user ID, user ID is your email ID and password, the similar same password, and then you will receive the authentication code on your mobile and after putting that uh, authentication code you would be able to log in and then you would have a complete environment over there that is microsoft word microsoft uh, powerpoint massa uh, like uh, word and all the software which you need it related to microsoft package that is available even microsoft teams you can use over there so benefits of blended learning enhance the student experience surely once you are trying to combine the two strategies face to face and online learning so it means uh, there is more enhancement of the student experience and they can learn more there is uh, potentially improved students outcomes there is good results you can bring it out because you are training them inside the classroom, you are sending them assignments online, you are taking the quizzes online and all their progress is uh, streamlined in uh, your LMS system that is Blackboard so you can have better outcomes from the students. Widen participation, you can have more participation. The reason behind students are uh, interacted and uh, collaborative, not inside the classroom, but online, so they can interact and coordinate between each other. So that can widen the participation of the students and teacher as well. It can improve accessibility and inclusions. Um, definitely accessibility improved over there and uh, most of the students take part uh, for the assignments, quizzes and many other things. So this is the benefit of blended learning. So the time to implement the blended learning implementation of the 
a blended learning should be on the priority base for all the universities i think so and now this is a time uh, to take a part most of the top of the line universities in the world already implemented blended learning jada university also using but i think so need um more powerful implementation so we can have it. but the teachers particip participation is more important to implement the blended learning so that would help everyone and especially for the students to bring some good outcomes and especially a very good steps taken by the uh, jazan university that they uh, bring some of the courses completely online some easy courses can bring online so this is a blend now you can teach inside the classroom and you can send quizzes online you can send assignments online and you can have uh, the e examination so this is a blend of uh, e learning and face to face learning that can help you to understand that what is what is going to be more interesting from uh, the student side and what is more inter interesting outcomes from the student side as well last but not least in the end in like end of the session i gonna like throw up one of the questions you guys i hope you will be interested to answer that one how blended learning affects teaching this is the last last slide of our presentation so i would expect to share your experiences what kind of experiences do you have that how blended learning affects teaching what change bring in teaching by implementing the blended learning that's all from the from today's sessions and thanks for joining the session uh, i hope you got some new ideas and if you have any question you can ask me please